Welcome to Dartin.com. Today we're going to take a look at a drive dock. This is Alsom's dual bay uh, USB 3 SATA drive dock. And it's dual bay, as you can see from the picture here, it is two spots in here for two and a half inch or three and a half inch SATA drives. And um, it's been a while since I looked at these kind of things, but basically what they do is they hook up a um, drives, they say you've taken out of a computer, a laptop, or a desktop, stick them in, basically use them, you know, mount them as a drive letter and be able to, you know, access data from it and use them. Uh, the nice thing about this one, it actually has an offline copy feature, so you can actually clone uh, two drives. So we'll try that feature as well. So, okay, let's go open this up and take a look at it and see what it's like. All right, so once you unbox it, there's everything you expect. We have the power brick, we have the included USB 3 cable, the unit itself, instruction manual, and then a thank you card. And looking at the unit itself here, we see that it's got a nice aluminum body. Kind of looks like a little MacBook Mini type. Back here we have the on-off on button, power, and then the USB goes there. And we have some, some indicators over here for different operations. Looks like these are percentages for the, the cloning operations. Power uh, light, and not sure what the other ones are. We'll look at those in a minute. So we have, see these are areas where, where it opens for the larger 3.5 inch drives. And then we have the cut out openings for the standard lap laptop size hard drives. All right, so let's go hook this up and see if we can hook up some drives to it and then try some cloning later on. All right, so one of the first things uh, you'll ask yourself is why do you even want to have one of these things? Well, in my case over here, um, you can see that I have a bunch of hard drives and these are all spinny disks and I pulled these out from various different computers I have. So these are laptop hard drives, two and a half inch ones, and they're all SATA drives. I have a terabyte one here, uh, a 500 gigabyte one here, and I have a desktop one, it's a three and a half inch, kind of a slim one that's uh, 500 gigabytes. And so, you know, I probably replaced these with either one terabyte ones or bigger ones or pulled them out for whatever reason because uh, maybe pulled them out from a dead system or something. And, well, I don't know what's on them anymore. So uh, it'd be kind of be handy to be able to, to, you know, instead of cracking open your computer and plugging these things in to find out, a dock like this is really handy because then you just kind of, you know, put, plop it in and mount it on the, your computer and see what's on there. So first things first, you know, just because sometimes uh, the drives may not mount, uh, let's go run the disk management tools. I'll type disk in the start menu here, run this, and you'll see disk manager come up. Now, right now it shows my current disk on my computer. All right, that's fine. So let's turn this on and, and do something with it. So I'll go here and it's already plugged into my computer this way. Power is plugged in. Turn this on. All right, and you'll see the power light goes on. So first things first, we'll just start with my big one here. We'll just plop this in and see what it does. All right, so it sits right in. You'll hear the drive spin up, and the light over here indicates that the A drive is available and it's being used. And we'll see what Windows shows me. And so it makes a ding, and so it's got nothing on here. So apparently I formatted it at some point, but uh, the disk manager here shows that there's a couple of unused areas or some other partitions of some sort. Um, I can't seem to get rid of them from here, uh, but here's my kind of an empty partition I had. So it's basically I already pre-formatted this disk and it's uh, already mounted itself as D. So what about one of these other guys? I'll take um, this uh, one terabyte drive, for example. I'll stick it in here. And you see it fits in that one little slot there. Plugs in. And the one thing about doing that is that it does seem to force the machine to kind of kick this disk in order to, to read it now. Uh, it shows D, which is this one, came up, and now E. So, so it actually does mount them both, but it sort of kicks this one off and kind of does itself over again uh, in order to have both of them. But it does have both of them, and they're independent. So you can see that this guy over here, my little drive over here, was a previous Windows system. So you see that the program files and stuff like that, some games on here, apparently. So a bunch of different, uh, looks like some emulators and stuff like that, some some ROMs, as well as, let's see, if I if I want to see the users, what's my, what's my users folder? I can see, well, do I have any documents on here? Let's see. I had some I had some pictures of some sort. Nothing else major in here. So this was from one of my little arcade machines. So this is pretty handy. So you can see that with this setup, I have these two drives docked already, and I, just, and I don't really need to do anything special. And now if I, if I want, I want to copy files between the two, I can easily do that by basically just dragging and dropping between this whole E and D drive. Or with this manager, I can just basically go and uh, you know remove the partition format the drive if I want to uh, and make use of it uh, for additional storage. The other scenario where this is actually very handy is say for example, 
if um, say this is my Windows drive and something went wrong with it, it doesn't boot anymore or something went wrong, and but I but I have files I want to get off this this uh, disk. Having this here, I can plug this in and get to the files I want from here and download them off onto another drive or even copy them onto another drive like this one over here to kind of basically um, you know, you know, back up if I didn't back up previously or have offline storage or like cloud storage. All right, so, so this is kind of a really nice little tool to have around for this particular purpose. All right, so one of the things that uh, I found is that you, you see that there's two different drive letters mounted here. And one thing about the dock is you cannot eject both either of them. You have to check both of them. So you see if over here, if I go to the USB thing, it identifies uh, it as a JMS uh, 556X series. or And um, you see the D and E are just grayed out. So, so I can't eject either one. I have to eject both of them. So if I click on that, it'll unmount them both. And then I'll basically be able to, to, to remove it. Now, disk management hasn't refreshed to, to show the difference, but they're no longer available. And, and you can see that if I go here, only that my C drive is available. So now I can easily just yank the drives and go on, go on from here. All right, so let's go and talk about the next big thing that you may want to do with this thing, which is cloning. And this device supports cloning a A and B drive. And we'll talk about some scenarios there. Okay, so I'm going to do a clone now. And this is a scenario you probably run into probably more often. Would be, say, that you have a smaller SSD or a drive like I have here. It's a 120 gigabyte PNY SSD from one of my computers. And you want to upgrade to a bigger one, like, say, a 500 or a 1 terabyte, since now they've gotten a lot cheaper. I have here a 1 terabyte Samsung Evo 850 Pro. And I'm going to basically clone this guy. So, all right, so I have here now the, is the dock untethered, so it's not on a computer. I'll turn it on. You can see the power goes on, and so according to the manual, the clone should basically uh, should be pretty easy to start. So I'll put the A drive, which is the one, uh, the origin, original source drive, in here. All right, and the A light goes on, and I'll put the, the, the B drive in, which is on with the destination, and in there. So now to start it, you have to hold this down for three seconds, and then the 100% light goes up, and then hit the button again to start the process. So I'll hit the button for one, three, three seconds, and. There's that, and hit the button one more time, and there it goes. So now it's going to start flashing. So this hopefully shouldn't take too long, but it should clone it, and I'll come back when it's done. And we're done. So it took roughly about, I'd say about seven minutes or so to clone that hard drive. And so now what we'll do is we'll uh, undock it, and I'm going to take a look and see what the partitioning looks like on the bigger hard drive. Okay, so here is my test computer, and I have the hard drive right here. So I'm going to plug this in now. Granted, it's all kind of like discombobulated right now because I'm just kind of testing things out. But I'll plug in my SATA connector to it, and then I'll plug in the power for it. And there we go. All right, so I'll put this over here and hit the power button for this computer and we'll see if it boots up. All right, there we go. All right, so, and oh, I forgot to plug in my keyboard. Hmm, that would help. Oops. Okay, so we are. So the machine's in. So let's go and I'm going to see. Hopefully, this will be visible. Let me just go to the disk manager. There we go. So you see from here, this guy basically copied over the 120 gigabyte or the 111 gigabyte partition here and I have 842 gigabytes of unallocated space so if I can just do a new let's see I'm going to extend this volume here and just use the defaults and there you go so C drive is that big now so if I go to this computer I see C drive here Shows that 948 gigabytes is a free is free of 953 gigabytes. So I have successfully upgraded my hard drive to a bigger hard drive uh, from the one that was there. 
And there you have it, a look at Alstom's Dual Bay Drive Dock. Uh, it uh, does what it says it's, what it's supposed to do. It basically, I can have two different drives hooked up to it at the same time, so I can have um, the ability to pull files off of them or copy one to the other. I was able to clone a smaller SSD to a larger SSD. Um, and so, yeah, it, uh, it works pretty well. So if there's anything you haven't seen or you want me to try something that, that uh, you know, I didn't try in this video, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to accommodate that request. Um, and as always, if you haven't uh, subscribed already, please subscribe and like the channel and uh, share it. Thanks for watching.